The U.S. Army Signal Corps had three words for his idea. Aerodynamically. Impossible. So why did a frontline commander quietly bet his men's lives on a bicycle chain and a forbidden radio mod? Picture a blacked out maintenance tent, somewhere in Europe, 1944. Outside, engines tick as they cool. Inside, under a single rattling lamp, a corporal who used to fix bicycles back home is staring at a field radio with its guts exposed. His commandos keep outrunning their own communications. Three, maybe four miles of range, then silence. No backup, no extraction, no second chance. If you're that mechanic, what do you do? Obey the manual or break it? He knows the problem isn't the transmitter, it's the antenna. Regulations insist on a short, sturdy whip, safe for vehicles, predictable, standardized. Longer, efficient antennas. The book says they'll snap in the wind, drag on trees, rip right off the jeeps. Aerodynamically impossible. Unless he pulls a busted bicycle from the scrap pile. Chain, gears, a battered rear hub. By morning, he's bolted a gear-driven reel to the side of the radio set. A thin wire antenna spools out behind the vehicle as it moves, paying out smoothly tension held by the bike gears. No new tubes, no secret frequencies, just physics the manual refuses to use. Would you trust that into combat? First, they test it in secret. One jeep drives out over the hills. Two miles still clear. Five miles no fade. Ten miles and the commander in the tent hears his raiders like they're next door. The mod is technically forbidden, but the colonel signs off anyway with conditions, limited missions, constant checks, one radio, one gamble. That night a commando unit vanishes into the dark, and for the first time headquarters doesn't lose them on the map. So here's the question, in a war of rules and regulations, who really changes the bat field? The engineer in the lab, or the mechanic in the canvas, clandestine lab, willing to take a managed risk on a bicycle gear and a prayer?